just something much better about praising the Lord together. Amen. Especially under a beautiful sky like this and a beautiful day in the city park of Dayton, Oregon. Anyway, we are so glad you are here to, to worship with us. And uh, uh, do we still have our welcome and communication cards out there around? Nope, not today. But So we want to ask you to fill out one of them. But, cause you're, but you are welcome here regardless. And uh, yeah. <laughs> And we're so wow. glad you are here, and I don't think we have a whole lot more to talk about. Uh, CR is still going on oh, over at the Dayton Christian Church on Thursday nights. And I guess we're going to be starting a new Bible study or uh, life groups on Wednesday nights coming up pretty soon. And other than that, I think we just need to pray and ask the God to just inhabit our praise this morning, shall we? Shall we just pray with me. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for summer. We know it's starting to get over, but we're still enjoying it, and life is still good. And we just thank you that we've got to have this beautiful weather, this summer, the seasons of life that you give us. It kind of mirrors life, really. But God, we thank you for it because we know that you are in the middle of all of it. And we just ask you to be in the middle of our praise right now. As we're just telling you, thank you again for this life, for this day, for your love for us. So just bless our, our worship to you, God. We ask this in your name. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
God of heaven, come down. Heaven, come down. Sing the song of hope, sing along. God of heaven, come down. Heaven, come down. Just to know you, you are near, is enough. God of heaven, come down. Heaven, come down. Who I am, who I am, who I am, you're 
Good morning, Freedom House. God bless you this morning. What an awesome day God has provided for us this morning. This morning, <clears throat> for the word of the offering, we go to John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. How awesome it is that we can walk in the light of the Lord. That we no longer belong to the world. That we walk in the light of the word. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning, Lord. We ask that you bless our offering, Father. In your blessed name, Father. We love you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And we raise a hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one. Born for our salvation, Jesus. There is a light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. Well, there is freedom from the chains that bind us. Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the water, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me, he roars like the lion, he bled as a lamb, he carries my healing in his hands. There is a name I call in times of trouble There is a song that comforts in the night There is a voice that calms the storm that rages Yes, He is Jesus, Jesus
like you. Lord, we lift our praises up to you today. And God, and words seem so little to praise you, to describe who you are, God. We thank you that you are that strong lion, and yet you are that gentle lamb. We thank you, God, that you walk with us through the hardest things in our life, and you are the God who celebrates with us. You are the one who loves to give us the desires of our hearts. God, we thank you for your healing. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you for being our Savior, for coming down here from earth to save us, Lord. Thank you for being our friend. Thank you for dying on the cross for us and giving us life. Lord, today we bless your holy name. And God, we just ask that you would just send your blessing out over this service and that we would feel your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, good morning, Freedom House. I can't believe it's September 1st, can you? And here we are. This is our last uh, service outdoors for this year. Uh, we always look forward to that in June when we get to come outside and we get to have church. I mean, this is church, don't you think? Yeah, yeah coming out here and just um, being out here and in the sun and in the heavens. I just feel like heaven has come down this morning and is with, with us. Uh, this is also our last sermon on um, Everyday Heroes, and we've actually saved the best for last. Uh, we're going to be talking about how Jesus is our greatest superhero. And our world loves superheroes, don't we? I mean, people are constantly creating new superheroes. But there is one superhero that just kind of started them all. And um, there were two, in 1938, there were two 17-year-old boys, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, and they wrote a story about a hero named Superman. And then they sold all of the rights to DC Comics for $130. <laughs> They fought for years to regain their rights. And it wasn't until later when DC sold the film rights for millions of dollars that they awarded Joe and Jerry $20,000 a year for life and that their name got to be in all the credits and publications. It is speculated that the story about Superman was written after Jerry's dad, who was a Jewish immigrant, was robbed at gunpoint and he had a heart attack. A few weeks later, Jerry and Joe invented the story of a bulletproof man that can fly. In one of the earliest sketches, Superman rushes to help a man who is being held up by a masked robber. So let's see how much you remember about Superman. So tell me the name of his planet that he came from. Krypton. Yes, you're right. And as Superman's parents sent him, and um, they didn't live, but Superman did. And he was adopted by a couple named Jonathan and... Do you remember Superman's mom's name? Martha. <laughs> yes. And they taught Superman to use that superhuman strength that he had uh, for good and to fight crime. So what was Superman's name? Clark Kent. Clark Kent. And where did Superman work? The Daily Planet. You guys know you're Superman. <laughs> and what was he there at the Daily Planet? A reporter. The love of his life? Lois Lane, and Superman has a letter on his suit. What letter is that? The letter S, and he is called Man of Steel. And Superman has an en enemy. What's his enemy's name? Lex Luthor. And what is his greatest weakness? Kryptonite. 
Well, Superman was not created from the greatest legends in America. He was created from a boy who had lost his dad. The story of Superman came not out of our strength, but out of our weakness. The story of Superman is fiction. It is written from the vivid imagination of two teenagers. They envisioned a Superman who would come whenever we needed help. Someone who would rescue us, fight evil, and most of all, be our friend. We don't have to imagine or wish for a Superman or a superhero because God has already provided us one. He exists and his name is Jesus. The story of the world's greatest superhero of all time is written in the Bible and it is not fiction. It is truth, divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. 66 books with 40 different authors written in three different languages and yet every book of the Bible builds upon the other books. All 66 books in the Bible point to the message of Christ. The Old Testament prophesies of the Messiah. And the New Testament tells over and over again how Christ has fulfilled those prophecies of the Messiah. Lee Strobel in his book, The Case for Faith, states that Bible scholars tell us that nearly 300 references to 61 specific prophecies of the Messiah were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Over 300 references to 61 specific prophecies were fulfilled. The odds against fulfilling that many prophecies by one person would be beyond all mathematical possibility. One mathematician's <coughs> estimate of those impossible odds <coughs> is one chance in a trillion, plus another 12 trillion. Every prophecy in the Bible is fulfilled through Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection. God <coughs> spoke to prophets who gave the message that he was sending a superhero to the world who would conquer sin and death. From the beginning of time, when sin entered the world through Adam and Eve, <clears throat> it has been our kryptonite. We have an enemy who is hell-bent on destroying us. Adam and Eve were tricked by Satan when he tempted them to disobey God and to eat from the tree of life and death. Satan told them that God was holding out on them and that God was not to be trusted. Sin happened because Adam and Eve turned away from God and they began to worship having their own power. They thought that they could be strong on their own. As humans living our way and trying to be our own God, has left us weak. Sin has corrupted and disrupted God's perfect world. <clears throat> it has created distance from us and a holy God. In the beginning of the world, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit created a plan to defeat the enemy. They would defeat the kryptonite of sin, and they knew that we were going to choose to sin with our free will. And yet, they still created us. The plan was that Jesus would leave heaven for earth and he would come to rescue us and set us free. In John 6, 38-40, Jesus tells us, <clears throat> For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God that sent me. Not
not to do my own will, and this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Jesus chose to die for us. He was fully God, but became fully human. He chose to come to earth where he would be beaten, cursed, and killed, to die on a cross for us as our sacrifice for our sins. So think about this, that Jesus was representing you on the cross. Jesus is our own personal superhero. He was raised to life after three days, and he chose to be sent so that we can be raised to life. If all Jesus ever did was restore our relationship with God the Father, it would be more than enough. If no other prayers were ever answered by him, that we were given eternal life, it would still be more than enough. Jesus would still be the greatest superhero of all time. Jesus teaches us many things. He teaches us to say yes to God and the great adventure of life. Matthew 4, 18 through 20. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. What was it about Jesus that made these men follow him? This verse um, just, just always, I, it amazes me that these fishermen left their nets and followed Jesus. If Jesus had not called these men, they would have led a boring life as fishermen. And I know your fishermen are saying, that's not boring, that's exciting. <laughs> but imagine what it must have been like to hang out with the Son of God. They got to see miracles. They got to be with Jesus and to hear him preach. And they got to see the hand of God move here on earth. Life became an adventure for them. And the same is true for us. When we answer the call to follow Jesus, life begins. We become changed and find our purpose in life. Jesus teaches us <clears throat> about living with abundance. He is the one who multiplies a little boy's lunch of five loaves and two fishes, and that lunch feeds 5,000 men and women and children. Matthew 14, 19 through 20. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass, and Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes he looked up towards heaven and blessed them. And then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. And they all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. In life, we can settle for little, thinking that we do not deserve more. Our resources are limited, but God's are not. When we give God the little that we have, it is multiplied. We don't have to live in fear that we don't have enough. Because as a child of God, we have access to abundance. And that is why Jesus tells us in John 10.10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. That word full means abundant. There is no end to the gifts that God has for us. Jesus is our healer who gives us the gift of healing. Matthew 10, 46-52 tells us about a great miracle. 
Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. And when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, Tell him to come here. And so they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. And Bartimaeus threw aside his coat. He jumped up and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Everywhere that Jesus went, thousands of people came to be healed by him. Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was coming and was waiting alongside the road for him. He had heard all day the people talking about Jesus and that he was a healer. And he yells out prophecy without even knowing it knowing it, calling Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Prophecy in the Old Testament told that the Messiah would be a descendant of King David. And in the New Testament, Matthew and Luke, we read that Jesus was born from the family line of King David. People tried to silence Bartimaeus, but he kept shouting. They judged who he was as a beggar. And they determined that he did not have the right to speak. We shouldn't let anything stop us from seeking Jesus. Whether it's our fear of what others think, say, or do to us. We can't allow our fear of failure and feelings of unworthiness to stop us from seeking Jesus. When Bartimaeus called out to Jesus, he responded to him. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what condition or situation you are in. Jesus will respond to you if you call out to him. He does not ignore our cries for help. What Jesus teaches us is that he does not see in colors, disabilities, whether we're rich or poor. He sees people and who we have been created to be. We see others through the blind eyes of judgment. Jesus teaches us to see others through the eyes of love and mercy. We are all the same on the inside. And he invites all of us to come to him. Jesus asks us, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus experienced the gift of sight because he was not afraid to answer Jesus' question. Lord, I want to see. Picture when you are praying that you are standing beside the road and here comes Jesus. And he looks at you and he is listening to every word that you have to say. And his eyes are kind. And he says, what do you want me to do for you how will you answer that question Lord I want God wants us to know that he's approachable and that he wants to hear from us Bartimaeus went from a man who needed help to a man who could help others you cannot encounter Jesus without experiencing healing and I have to say, this is my favorite thing about Jesus. Because I have personally experienced the healing power of Jesus. 
And it's been hard for me to get it out today because I don't think the enemy wants to praise God, but I'm going to praise him today. I was diagnosed with a reoccurrence of breast cancer in January, and, and I felt such great fear, and I was really depressed. After five years of being in remission, and now I had a whole new battle to fight. But you know, everything changed for my family and I when on a Sunday morning, you gathered around us and you prayed for us. Uh, my kids will tell you that on that day that their fear left and peace came over them. And then you didn't stop praying for me. You have continued to pray for me. And God has told me that, that many have cried out my name before him. There are times when we have to believe for other people when we cannot believe, um, when they cannot believe for themselves. And I began to hold on to faith that with God all things are possible. On Wednesday, I had a bone scan and a CT scan. And when I was having the bone scan, they, uh, the technician put on praise music for me. And guess what song came on? <laughs> it was our theme song, Raise a Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, I just was laying there. I had to be perfectly still listening to the words of that song that I will sing in the presence of my enemies. That hope will, out of the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. My king is alive. Those were the words that, that I was singing. And um, then I got a call from the doctor. The doctor said the bone scan um, showed no sign of metastasized breast cancer. Uh, he also said that my CT scan was very good. And he said, nice response. <laughs> so I am just um, praising God for that today because God's healing power is as strong today as it was when he healed Bartimaeus. And God has healed me. And um, Gilbert just told me he's completely healed. Uh, prostate cancer. Um, it's finished with chemo and uh, no longer has his port. And um, every week we see God's healing on Chuck. Um, Jesus is our healer. Through the authority of Jesus' name, healing is possible. And it's not just physical healing, but emotional healing. Jesus teaches us to let go of our emotional hurts. And there is no greater display of superhero strength than Jesus on the cross. Jesus is innocent. He's without sin. He's the Son of God. And the Father God has thousands of angels who are standing by waiting to rescue him. But Jesus does not call them. He is fully human and he prays for this cup to be taken from him knowing all that is ahead for him. Jesus is still willing to die for us. When Jesus is falsely arrested, he's not given anything to eat or drink. He's punched by the Roman soldiers. He's treated roughly. And then they take out a whip and they begin to beat him. The whip has bits of bone that cut into his back. And Jesus takes the stripes on his back and he fulfills prophecy in Isaiah 53, 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. He is made to carry his cross through the streets as people spit on him and they yell hateful words. The crossbar weighs about 75 pounds and Jesus is dehydrated and has suffered blood loss. He is thrown on the cross and the Roman soldiers 
began to nail his wrists and his feet to the cross. He is positioned in such a way that he cannot get a full breath in his lungs. As Jesus looks down from the cross, he sees the soldiers gambling for his robes and the very ones who have been so cruel to him. And he gathers up enough breath to say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The enemy has no weapon against forgiveness. The power of forgiveness is released by Jesus on the cross. And he shows us by example to release our hurts to God the Father. Jesus teaches us to bless and not curse. It takes greater power to bless than curse. We've all experienced hurts, and it's so much easier to curse and hate than to bless and love. And perhaps this is the greatest gift of all, that Jesus gives us emotional healing. When we forgive, we are no longer in bondage to the enemy. Forgiveness breaks the enemy's power. Jesus' forgiveness of our sins gives us the power to forgive others when they sin against us. It gives us the power to move on with our lives and to be willing to release the debt that has been owed to us. As Jesus takes his last breath on the cross, he yells, it is finished. It is yelled in triumph that Satan is defeated. The kryptonite of sin that has left us weak is defeated. Death is defeated. Jesus raises from the grave after three days. The greatest superhero of all is still alive, and he's in heaven praying for us. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testing we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, and there we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Jesus came not out of our strength, but out of our weakness. It is when we admit that we are weak and need Jesus that we become strong, confident people. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we are given a power that we could never imagine, but the Bible tells us is truth. A power that we can only know when we experience it by inviting Jesus into our lives. This power is the Holy Spirit, and it is the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. We carry around in our bodies the living power of Christ. We are his sanctuary. This is the power that helps us to overcome sin. This is the power that helps us defeat our enemy. This power gives us access to God the Father. And this power helps us to be God's everyday heroes in this world. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 because you too have heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, and because you believed in the one who is truth, your lives are marked with his seal. This is none other than the Holy Spirit who is promised as the guarantee towards the inheritance we are to receive when he frees and rescues all who belong to him. To God be all praise and glory. I'm going to have the worship team come back up. Jesus empowers us through the Holy Spirit to be who we are created to be and to live out our adventure of life, to understand that there are abundant 
resources to our Father God to ask for healing and to tell Jesus what we want, to be emotionally healthy as we receive and give forgiveness, to live a life that is not defeated, but filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to imagine or wish for a superman or a superhero. God has already provided us one. Jesus is the greatest hero of all time. Uh, this morning I was I was talking with Chuck, and Chuck said, you know, that that he would just like to tell everyone uh, to get ready, to get their house in order, to not wait to receive Jesus into their lives today. And you know, you can do that sitting out here in the park under the sun, what better place uh, just to invite Christ into your life today, to just, um, just say, Jesus, I know that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. Please forgive my sins. I want you to be in control of me, and I want to experience your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple that salvation is the beginning there's so much more life uh, that god has for you and so if you have made that commitment today if you would just come and talk to me and tell me so we can celebrate with you and uh, i'm gonna have you guys stand to your feet as the worship team is singing today you know i've shared with you why i think jesus is the greatest superhero but you all have your own reasons and you've all experienced healing. And if you would just lift up your praises uh, to Jesus today and to just give him what is due him, that he is worthy of our praise and he is our superhero. <laughs>
us, but we want to proclaim to all the world uh, that he is life for all of us. Uh, we're, we've got the grill master over there, James, who's uh, cooking up hamburgers and hot dogs. Let's give him a hand. And um, I just want to pray for our lunch. Um, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are a superhero, God, and we give you our praise. Uh, we, we ask, God, that you would just bless our time together and that we would just have fun, God, just celebrating you and each other. God, we just send that forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so next week, we'll be back at the community center. Pastor Bill uh, will be speaking. And yes, that's always a clap. <laughs> and, um, and we're starting a brand new sermon series. It's called Life Track. Uh, it's about getting your life on track by knowing God, finding freedom, discovering your purpose, and living out your call. So you don't want to miss that. So uh, anyway, have a great lunch and a great day.